Hey everybody, back again real quick to show you a few of the ways I incorporate sprouts into my pet's diets, just like I warned you I would. So come on, let's not waste any time. Let's go. All right, over here, Dr. Becker points out in this article from Mercola Healthy Pets that eating sprouts can satisfy a certain behavior that I'm sure we've all seen our animals do. This is their desire to chew on grasses. When we see our animals do this, we often think they have an upset stomach, but that's not always the case. This is a natural behavior. They do this to get extra fiber, vitamins, minerals, enzymes, and things in their diet. And this is something they do in the wild also. But unfortunately, in this modern world, we just can't trust the grasses out there. I see all these companies running around spraying all kinds of crazy chemicals, I see my neighbors spraying their Roundup with that nasty glyphosate in there, and I don't want my pets being exposed to any of that. So let's be careful with where we allow our pets to chew on the grasses, okay? Here she shows you how she feeds sprouts to her pets. She just grows them in a little tray there and leaves them out for them to chew on at their leisure. And this can be one great way to do that and help to satisfy that behavior. Another similar thing are these products that you see called cat grass or pet grass, which are really just wheat grass that you can grow yourself in the little package. While these products can be great, I do recommend you buy organic, although the truth is there's no substitute to growing them yourself from the freshest organic seed possible. And also, wheat grass is not quite as digestible as the broccoli, alfalfa, clover, and sunflower sprouts that we're are specifically talking about here. This is because it has a much hardier, denser fiber that is not broken down as easily. And while this is a great way to get a little extra nutrition in the system and to help satisfy that behavior, if you saw my previous video, then you know that I'm actually using these sprouts as a strategy to add back in the missing elements that were destroyed during the cooking and processing of the commercial pet foods. This includes vitamins and minerals, but most importantly, in my opinion, it's for the enzyme activity to assist in the breakdown and assimilation of the nutrients in the food, making them as bioavailable as possible. So let me show you one of the ways in which I do that. Here I am with a handful of broccoli sprouts. You see I'm crushing them up and tearing them into little bits and pieces. Now dogs and cats are really not good at chewing, and by breaking it up like this, I'm extracting and freeing the nutrition, I'm giving more surface area and space for the stomach acids to digest, and since these are broccoli sprouts, I'm actually creating sulforaphane on the spot by crushing. And here you see I have a very elegant technique to giving them to my cats, where I just fling what's stuck to my fingers into the bowl. And when feeding things like these to my cats, I always have the attitude that less is more. They do not need a lot. Then I just mix it into the food, and we're ready to go. That's about it. Feeding sprouts to your pets is as simple as that. But this is just one of the ways I incorporate sprouts into my pet's diet. And if you stay tuned to the channel, I'm going to teach you more as I give away all my secrets here. So feel free to subscribe. Please hit the like button because quite frankly, we could really use the support around here, and it really motivates me to make these videos, knowing that people are actually watching them and getting something out of it. So that's it for me today. Look forward to seeing you guys next time. All the best to you and your pets.